Yes, sir. Watch this. Take cover. Oh. Watch this. Good afternoon, Interworld. It's Sergeant Slack here from Banana Bomb Productions, and uh, we're going to do something a little bit different today. I've got my new upgrades, as you can see here. New motherboard, new RAM, new processor, old graphics cards. And so I'm going to show you how to put together a computer. First thing you want to do if you're rooting around inside a computer is get rid of any jewellery you might be wearing, because that can catch on things, scratch stuff up, and uh, <coughs> generally do lots of things you don't want to do. So what are you going to need for make a computer? You're going to need some hard drive, well a hard drive at least, mine are already installed. I've also got, <coughs> flip them over, a couple of DVD writers in there as well, for good measure. You're going to need a case, which is this big shiny silver thing here. Uh, you're going to need a power supply with uh, <coughs> appropriate connectors. And it's going to give your uh, all your parts power. You're going to need a processor. This is a Core i7 2600K, so I can do some overclocking. Uh, <coughs> you're going to need a motherboard, which is going to go in here, and uh, <coughs> everything is going to connect to that. You're going to need some RAM, and you're going to need a graphics card. So, I mean, the way to think about this is, is kind of like the human body. You've got the processor, which is the brain, that does all the controlling of things. And you've got the uh, motherboard, which is kind of like the central nervous system, which helps brain communicate with other things, like RAM. Now, RAM, the best way to think about RAM is it's kind of like your short-term memory. When you start a program on your computer, it puts information into the RAM so that it can be quickly accessed. Your hard drives are more like long-term memory. That's all the stuff that you remember, that's the stuff you're thinking about while you're doing stuff. Graphics card, kind of like the eyes, in a weird way. So you get to see what's going down. Now, what else you're going to need is some thermal paste. You're going to need in my pocket here, I've got a load of screws. Ooh, my thumb screws for the back of in here. A load of screws to mount everything into the case with, and a screwdriver. Normal Phillips head. What I find quite useful is if you haven't got compressed air, ooh, look at the dust in it. If you haven't got a can of compressed air to get all the dust out of things, give it a brush down, just very gently make her, uh, take her not to catch the metal bits on circuit boards and things like that and just give it a little bit of a brush down get rid of all the dirt and filth I've already done that outside because mine was hella dusty okay so now first thing we I'm going to do is uh, have a bit of a tidy up these cables in here I mean these are all the things that you connect onto your motherboard they're all labelled and if you can see like the reset switch and no, hard drive LED, the power switch so these are simply these buttons on the front this is where it connects onto your motherboard so your computer knows when it's being turned on hard drives, these are SATA leads to connect to the uh, motherboard and these are just little power adapters and things and then all my USB and audio things up at the top got some more of those over there and for those of you vintage PCs out there you'll remember IDE cables from when they first existed which has now been replaced by SATA because it's faster you get 6 gigabits per second on SATA something like that flies down so tidy all these out of the way. Now I've already had this uh, computer in this case before so my hard drives, DVD drives and power supply are all installed. So I'm going to put that into one side now. 
while I take out my motherboard. Now, take care when you're doing this. Touch something uh, metal around you. Not the wood, obviously. Touch something metal around you to uh, kind of discharge any static electricity you might be carrying. This is especially important at this time of year, what with all the um, dryness in the air from all the heating and everything, you get static shocks a lot more often than you would do normally. So, I'm going to use this as a cushion to protect my motherboard. And uh, we'll take a quick look at the motherboard and see where things are going on. Now this is double, uh, dual channel RAM, DDR3, so that will go in there. Presumably one of them, not the other one. You've kind of got North Bridge, which is getting things into the RAM. South Bridge, which is getting these things here into the processor where they can be used. And this is where your processor sits and where it all comes together. Now, ooh, these bits here are uh, your back plate, so onboard sound card, USB, uh, onboard graphics, where well, it's actually the CPU nowadays, and lots of uh, USB 3s over here. Mmm, shiny. Okay, so we're gonna undo this. Now, I prefer to put the processor in first because things get very fiddly once you've got everything in your case so actually first before we do that let me show you this on the back of the case now you get one of these with your motherboard and all this does is it sits in your case and makes the back look pretty so that it's not all just bare circuitry like it is there so this will sit over here make this all look pretty so I haven't removed my old one so it just kind of fits in and wedges in there that's my old one my old motherboard this is the one for my new motherboard ooh nicely padded okay so a lot of this stuff is just common sense you can read the manuals if you want but figure out which way it's going to go on and then pop it in and it just fits in the hole a little bit of shimmying around Bye. there we go line it up from the bottom that just pushes in the place there and gives you a nice looking back to your case makes it kind of look pretty so we're going back to our motherboard now we're going to take our processor open it up take it out now I do plan I got the uh, I got the 2600K because the K is the unlocked one so if you're going to do any overclocking and things it's wise to get the unlocked one because then you can actually ramp it properly. Now this comes with the stock Intel cooler which is small and not particularly good and noisy. So <coughs> I've actually gone ahead and bought another cooler. which is this beast of an Alpenfon from Germany so this is going to sit on top of my processor here and uh, it's going to do a better job of cooling than the stock one now the thing is with these this is 1155 socket LGA 1155 so you're going to take your processor you want to be very careful when handling your processor because if you stuff that up, then you're boned, really. So if you look at the processor with me here, just here, and then again just here, there's a couple of notches. And these line up 
we're just here and just here on the motherboard. So very gently, just kind of pop him on there and they'll just fall into place. Put the cover on again very gently and then this bit is going to press it down hold the motherboard securely this bit's going to press it down now just be brave and flip that under there and that's going to sit there right next job up would be to fit the cooler but obviously if I put the cooler on there it's going to take up all this space and it's going to make getting the board into the box very difficult so I'll put that on one side for now while we get this board installed in the case actually I'm going to do the switches first because the switches always come back and form me nowadays it's really good because you get these little things so if you can see on here You've got your, like your power and your ground and then your reset switch. So the basic idea of these is instead of every time you change your like if I upgrade my case, instead of having to get all these come back. Instead of having to get all these fiddly little things on and off the board, you can just plug them into this connector here. So that's what I'm gonna do because I've never done it before. I've never intended to uh, swap things about too much but I do intend to upgrade my case at some point in the future so with those on there now all I need to do when I've got this in the case is just go Clunk, and it'll marry up. You can see there, it'll marry up all those connectors. Oh, that one's a little bent. Get you back out so in line with the rest of them. That'll just go clunk on top of there, and all the switches are done. <laughs> So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop my motherboard into the case, secure it with some of these screws here. <coughs> so as you can see on the bottom of the case, there's these kind of raised lugs here. And that's what my motherboard's going to sit on. So I was doing the RAM. Now, RAM's quite easy to install. And you can use the back up. Okay, so take your RAM sticks out of the packaging. Now these are the Ballistics Tactical Tracers. I went for these, not because of the showy LEDs, although I have to admit I am quite looking forward to seeing what they look like, but because, uh, <coughs> I don't know if you can read here, 1600 megahertz and the cast timing is 88824 which means they're going to be nice and spanky. So you want to line up this little dent here with these little notches in the groove here. And all you do, quite simple, push out these plastic bits on one side on this motherboard and then just gently apply pressure on both ends of the stick and just gently push it down. I'm going to try again. Push them gently down and into the board and then the clip comes back 
to hold it in place so you know you've got a nice secure fit. Take the next one, and do the same, unclip, and just gently ease it down and uh, push it in so that it fits snugly and sometimes the clips snap up and shut themselves off for you which is always nice so now we're going to put the CPU cooler on warning remove before installation now as you'll notice with the stock cooler I'll just go and grab that a second it's got this little grey stuff on the bottom here now this is thermal paste so if you're fitting a custom cooler and it doesn't have the thermal paste already applied you're going to need to have some and apply it now it came with some but I'm going to use my arctic silver now this is one of the most important things because you don't want to put too much on but you need to put enough on to get a nice even coverage because otherwise if it's not even then your CPU will cool unevenly you want to be careful not to go up over the edges and just kind of smooth it out there the CPU cooler when it goes on it's going to wiggle a bit anyway and just smooth that out so you want to have about that much not too much not too little enough to evenly coat it when the cooler goes on now some people put a pea sized blob on and then smooth it around with a card but I just use this handy syringe it came in and uh, it's quite messy this stuff mind you don't get it on your fingers like that because it'll get everywhere if you do get rid of it now this cooler is going to be a little bit tricky because it's just vaguely somewhere in there I'm going to put it on this way so it sucks air from over my RAM blows it out through the cooler where it'll get extracted by this fan on the back here power lead for the fan tuck that up out of the way now this can be, installing the cooler can be one of the most nerve wracking parts of the build. You want to make sure all these little plastic twiggers, because I liked it, call me old fashioned if you will, but I liked it when CPU coders used to screw into the motherboard, because, well you'll see why in just a second, when you're installing this. <coughs> you've got to basically just push down on these things until they snap into place so let's do the easy ones push down firmly on them and they'll click into place first time I ever did this on a modern CPU it scared the hell out of me because <coughs> you've just bought this expensive motherboard and it says in the instructions push down firmly until you hear a crack you gonna play ball? you gonna play ball? yes, yeah, so there we are coolers installed, just double check them all make sure they're they're all nice and securely in because again if you stuff this bit up the CPU is going to cool it inefficiently and you don't want that to happen trust me ok so now we're ready to start connecting things up to our motherboard I, don't, I prefer to do this before the graphics card goes in because then you can still see what you're doing so marked on the board there'll be little things like power fan 2 so I'm going to plug my external 
my extractors in to that one. Just find the connectors and connect them up. If you're unsure about any of this, it will be all mentioned in the uh, in the manuals where your connectors are. Okay, so now it's just a case of connecting everything else. So I'm going to show you. I'm just going to have to take the panel out. I'm going to show you how to do the graphics card, and then I think we'll call it. We'll uh, plug a bit of power in, and we're done. So extract that very gently. Take our graphics card. In mind it doesn't foul on power cables. This is going to be the one for my graphics card. Just kind of line it up. Oh, I didn't even need to take that other one out. Line it up gently. Apply even pressure again across the connector. And uh, get that into place. Now over here. We've got a couple of screws. Just locate them in the holes and it helps to hold the graphics card in place when you plug it in and unplug in your monitor. So now we've got everything in. we can start connecting some things up. So we'll just go through the major connectors. This is your big bad BC of the power. That'll plug in just down there on the side on mine. And then you've got two of these. This one is your power for your CPU. That's your power for your motherboard in general. This is the power supply for your CPU. So it goes on there. It'll generally only fit in one way around, so there isn't too much danger of doing it the wrong way. Some power supplies offer more connectors for better power usage. And then this one comes down, plugs into my graphics card here. So there we are. I hope you find this instructional useful, and uh, hopefully now you won't be scared of doing your own computer when it comes to it. And now we're ready. Power, power goes in, power goes on. Ooh, very nice. Got a bit of a clash of colours there. Now it's important when you first power on. Make sure all those cables are out of the way. Make sure all your fans spin up, especially graphics card and a CPU cooler fan. Make sure they're spinning up, and that's the power on self test. I'm thinking that's a good beep. And so there we have it. A nicely new installed upgrade. Wicked. I'll let you know how it goes. I plan to do some overclocking with this, so hopefully I'll be able to do a bit of a guide on that as well once I've got my head around it. Nice one. This is Sergeant Slack from Banana Bomb Productions saying, Make a computer!